Good morning, everyone. We are so glad you're joining us from your home offices this morning. We sure hope to have been in Savannah this week. But instead, we'll meet using technology to share what's new in ACEWARE in both Student Manager and in ACEWEB. And we'll hear about how other colleagues are putting the software to work and see some tips and tricks on topics that you all selected. You're going to see a little bit about the others joining us this week. I have to share, you've kept me challenged here to keep this slide current. And in fact, it is not current as it's seen here. We have 113 folks joining us from around the nation. And you can get that attendee list on the conference website, the virtual conference site. We have professionals from community colleges, career and technical schools, state colleges and universities, community enrichment, education centers, training centers, botanical gardens, and medical colleges. Welcome, everyone. On today's schedule, you're going to see what's new in Student Manager this morning. You'll hear about Student Manager standard operating procedures after lunch. And we'll close the day with what's new in ACEWEB with Jason and Stein. We certainly want you to participate in, in all of the sessions by asking questions and raising your hands on request from presenter. You can raise your hands from here, ask questions right here, and Chuck and I will see those. And I encourage you to stay to the very end of each session because every, at each session we'll be drawing for some goodies. And this morning, since you can't walk along River Street, we will send you some pralines from the River Street Sweet Store. So we may not be able to stroll along there, but we can deliver some of those goodies to you. We're going to start our first session today with Matthew. He's been working hard since January to bring you a lot of new goodies for Student Manager. So we're going to spend the rest of the time with Matthew. And as I turn controls over to him, I want to share that not only is Matthew a developer with us, but he is also an author and a winemaker, and I know he does some golfing, and gosh, he's just a guy of the jack of all trades. So we appreciate having Matthew with us to show us what's new in Student Manager. I'm going to disappear while he does that, and Matthew, I am turning things over to you. Do you see my screen? I'm okay. seeing your okay. screen. Okay, so back in January at the retreat, uh, we um, okay. We identified 18 things in Student Manager that we wanted to uh, have done by conference. Um, so I did get all 18 done, minus a little bit of testing that still needs to happen, but. Uh, uh, we're hoping that we'll be able to release that update uh, sometime today. Um, well, it should be sometime today. We'll, we'll get it done. Um, additionally, there uh, one of these items that I will show today did extend over into AceWeb, uh, so I will mention that one as as also applying to AceWeb. Uh, we also have a couple of, of items that uh, I won't be showing in Student Manager because they're basically things you set in, stand in, in Manager and, and it applies to AceWeb. So I will let Jason and Stein show those this afternoon. Um, there was also one last minute request that came in uh, that I did get done for this build going out today. So I will also talk about that when that comes up. Okay, first thing I'm going to show and I'm going to bring up Rob uh, Blagojevich in here. Uh, Rob just had a birthday yesterday. He turned 62, but he does not. He did not get the fee category of the senior fee yet. Uh, so rather than me setting it in here or or clicking into, I could have clicked into the uh, date and tabbed out, and it would have given him that. But uh, uh, the thing we've added is with the, the senior citizen fee category preference and setting the age to 62, this R button, and you hover over it and it tells you it gives everyone over the set age the senior fee category. 
So uh, this kind of just refreshes, that's why I put R, refreshes the uh, senior fee category. So I'm going to press that now. Uh, okay, I apparently still have a window that I need to get rid of. Ah, my pin isn't working. Okay, I'll take notes later. Um, so it did change one fee category for one person. So if I go look up that person, Blagojevich, yay, he's got the senior citizen fee. So uh, that will uh, help us out, um, help you guys out that are using this um, this senior fee category. Okay, next is lock editing. Um, Payments, 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 preferences. If I go to payments, uh, the new thing is be able to lock editing, editing of noted pay records. And what we define as noted, and you see the hover there, is something filled in in one of the character UDF fields. Uh, so I don't know if you guys are using this, uh, um, the UDFs to, to show... Um, you know additional things the the person that asked for this the reason they wanted it was for um they put the banner uh number banner i d into that uh that that payment field um to show so they wanted it locked down after they did that so if I bring up any payment record doesn't matter Let's see who I've got oh Jason's got plenty of payments i think. Ah, let's just add a new payment. Check. Save it. Okay, so it looks editable. I can do changes if I need to, uh, whatever I need to do. So if I put in now some ID number, one, two, three, four, five, six, tab out, everything grays out. So, well, most everything, email and, and account number still stay, but... Um, uh, everything else gets locked down for this record. Um, so that's that's the new thing with that. And, oh, I could have stayed with the registration, but this actually applies course uh, register um, name, and I'll bring up a name. If you go to the additional info tab, in the bottom right hand corner of these additional info tab screens is UDF help button and there's my okay I never use Internet Explorer but what it does is bring you right to the UDF help screen in in uh, the help guide and you can click on things and be able to see what uh, uh, you know what size, character, you know, what what you're needing to look up that you need to know about these fields, uh, especially handy, um, you know, if, in reporting wise, okay, what was the name of this, the second numeric field? Oh, is N-U-D-F N-2. So, uh, should help you with reporting as well, but, um, uh, but yeah, I would think the character size is uh, being able to know which which character sizes which on the name on the uh, uh, different screens would help you. Okay. Email roster to instructor. This has actually undergone um, a little bit of an overhaul, but let me pull up a good course here. This one has eight people. Okay, so if I do quick reports, email roster to instructor. This is, it used to be you'd have like 12, 13, 14 choices of, you know, you want name, address, phone number, you know, all these different options, uh, but they were set options. Got rid of that and instead put in to where you can choose which fields you want to do. So if I want the phone numbers, and the email in addition to the person's name. Ah, let's put in firm too. We want firm. Uh, you can put in the registration note, paid status. 
these I think those are two new options. I don't think that was ever covered by any of the options before. But anyway, those are now uh to you can select those. And yeah, let's see paid status. Um so I hit done here. Uh brings up this this has always been here. Do you want it in HTML format or regular format? I want it in regular format cuz it's a little easier to see on uh my paper cut program. Um select yes for all. Oh well, and we could see it in the preview anyway. Um so it's showing you the pay everybody that's paid. Do it. Yeah, balance do these last two people. Um Willard Romney and Lisa, Leslie Ziegler both have a balance due, so that's in the email being sent to the instructor. Uh, then you've got, you know, the phone numbers. Apparently, doesn't look like anybody has a cell phone number put in, but it would have listed a C, and then that phone number. But you do see the daytime and home phone for the people that you're wanting to see. Um, so anyway, hopefully a little bit easier to use. Well, it should be a lot easier unless you always had it memorized. Always pick number six when you're doing this email, but eh. Oh, well, by the way, instead of having to remember, so let's cancel that. I'm going to go back through email roster to instructor. Everything I chose is remembered. So you don't have to remember, hey, check mark this, this, and this. It's remembered for you. This is a user-by-user um, uh, remembrance. So if you send a certain set of fields and your next door neighbor, Joe, he sends a different set, then uh, you you and Joe can have your different set and it's always remembered. So, and I'll hit done and get out of this real quick. Cancel. Okay. Next on my list. Calendar attachment and da, da, da. I just realized I've now messed up both of my here. I'm going to switch my uh, one demo real quick. Um, by the way, we've had Outlook available for those of you wanting to use Outlook to send email. Uh, only available through Student Manager, can't do it through Ace Web. But um, okay, the reason why I did this is because I definitely want to see this attachment. And if I bring up, who was I playing with? Uh, edit. Yeah, this should work. Um, da -da -da, send attachment file. Well. Hold on. Before I do that, course info, do I have a location? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm giving away what this is going to do, but with the calendar attachment file and... Um, okay. Standard email. And I'm going to change this to be me so that I get it. Aceware.com and and I don't have Outlook open at the moment. That's one of the downsides. Retry though, now that I have Outlook open, that's it. Okay. But it's on my other screen. So let me bring it over to this screen. Maybe. Come on. Okay, so here's the calendar attachment file and if I do a save as real quick, and I'll just pop it on the desktop. Save. Now, if I go to the desktop, where's that ICS file? Right there. Edit with Notepad++. Or I could go ahead and put it into Outlook. But uh, the new thing is the location field is now in the ICS file itself. So when you import that, or when the student imports that into Outlook, or you know whichever mail client or uh, calendar client that they use, um, that location is going to show up in those. So that's the new thing. Uh, you guys don't want to see that. Okay, I'm done with this.
Amy, it looks like we are getting some noises from your computer. Um, Sorry about so, that. Yep. Yeah, just mute and we should no longer hear you. Thank you. All right, on with the show. Excluded. Okay, also with the uh, um, calendar attachments. And I've went back to my other uh, demo, so this is slightly different. Print receipt. Um, okay, if I wait list at this point and print receipt, standard. Da -da. I thought I had that fixed. Da -da -da. Ah. Okay. So what's supposed to happen is the receipt should be coming up for us to preview, but the attachment line would be blank, even though I had send calendar attachment file. But because this isn't a confirmed registration, this is a waitlisted registration, it's not going to get the attachment file. Um, and of course, love program or giving a presentation, and especially when we haven't been able to quite iron out all the bugs. Um, uh, yeah, my presentation has a few issues still. But uh, we should be able to get that ironed out, fixed, ready to go today. So, um, yeah, be watching for that. Um, okay, next thing. Mass. Registrations. I think I want to show a couple here one time. Uh, so if I go to receipts, we did a lot of things with email, by the way. Um, so if I do, I want to modify my additional report here. And um, receipts for one course. And of course I didn't put my sample course out here. So let me find it real quick in my notes. This should be that same course I was working with with eight people. Uh, if I do this one, and I'm going to show you why here in just a second. Okay, so the first new thing is with the uh, do email receipt, uh, added a new option, and this is actually a second parameter, so comma, and then the second parameter being whatever template you want to use for this, um, um, for these people. Uh, so instead of always having to switch the uh, pick of your template at each run, uh, you can just now pass it as a parameter. And uh, and you can and well here let's run it. Okay, file and close. Yes, done. Close that. Okay, so it runs the email receipt wizard like normal, except that this section is now blank. It's automatically recognized that I'm running that reminder and um, and chosen that for you. Another new thing on here is the sample button. So if I'm wondering at this point, okay, is it really pulling that uh, that reminder email? I can click on sample and see it just grabs the first uh, registration in the cursor and shows me that information from it. We would like, we'd like to remind you, yeah, that's my reminder template. Uh, I can definitely see that now, but uh, be able to see what's generating on these uh, templates or generating from the template into actual data, and we can see that. Uh, another new thing on this screen is heading for multiples. Uh, the sample is only going to show one. So even if that first person in the cursor has a grouped 
registration. It's only going to show me that first one. Uh, but if I send these and uh, I can choose the heading for each one, so it'd be uh, this first one would be course number one, two, three, as it goes through uh, in pulling in generating those those courses, or it could have as the header course. Um, and then the course number, or if you don't want a heading in between, then you can select none. But uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say OK so we can see uh, something going on. And it looks like not everybody in my eight registrations had um, uh, a valid email address. But you can see here course number one, 19F. 19F is course number two, course number three, 20F. Uh, that's that's the course that, that I did choose, and then it's also grouped with this fourth course. So for this uh, um, Ziegler, looks like Leslie Ziegler, uh, it got um, there was four four registrations grouped together for for that person. So. There's that. And we'll minimize that because I think we'll be showing that again. Okay, next thing. Oh, I'm lost. Okay, there I am. Name screen, and I'm going to pull up my name record here real quick. And... Email link to pay outstanding. So this is the new new thing here. Um, and I, well, I'm just going to click it so you can see what happens and bring back up paper cut. So it is giving an email to the student. You have a balance with us. Please use the link to log on and pay your balance. So if I click this, bring Chrome over here. It it takes you to the account status.awp page in which you must log on before viewing your accounts. Matthew at eSquare and browser remembered my password. So uh, there's my account status. I've got one here to pay, to pay. And oops, I'm accidentally showing another feature, but uh, I'll let Jason and Stein talk about that receipt button later. So uh, anyway. Countstatus.awp uh, link to your st students that are are uh, needing to pay. Okay, and let's close that. Next thing. Catalog. Ports, accounting, no, module. Catalog, catalog codes, and actually this is others too, but mainly catalog codes. Um, I think forever we've had the add date and created by, well not forever because mine's blank in here in this demo, but um, add date and created by have been in here. What's new is the update date and updated by. Which, how did I get an updated by? Oh, updated by actually has been in the system. It just hasn't been visible on here. The update date, though, is brand new. So all your dates are going to be blank um, in, in your system when you do the update. But as you start doing changes, uh, you're going to start getting the tattletale of who's changing these records. So. Uh, those are the new thing here. Let's just make a change, save it, update date, and I'm logged in as Ace. So there we go. All right, we are ready for the emergency email. So the new thing, and let me bring up a date that's actually going to have a couple uh, date of emergency. New thing is right here. Uh, you can now deselect courses that you don't want to apply, uh, especially if you've got, you know, burst pipe, 
um, the people that are here at 8 a.m., they already know about the burst pipe. They're being sent home. It's those people coming at 9 a.m., hey, we definitely don't want them coming because, hey, we got to deal with this burst pipe. So uncheck this one and only send to the first one. Done. Yeah. And you could change this to be your burst pipe. Hit done, and it's sending those four. And you could also send to instructors. All right, so there's a quick overview of that. Um, next thing is new field on the course record. Let me get, oh, it doesn't matter. This one is fine. So if you have a template that you always use with this course, you can now set that template on the course screen. So if I always want the reminder email going out with this course, obviously that's not what you would be doing. Maybe you'd have E underscore mail two or E underscore mail uh, um, 010 courses or something so that you know it's just for these courses. But anyway, for my purposes, I'm just going to do reminder. Uh, go over here to a... a somebody that's not waitlisted, and if I print receipt, you still choose whatever you want to choose here or leave it, you know, you're 99% of the time you're sending the standard email receipt, leave this standard email receipt, but it is going to detect off the course screen that you actually want to do the reminder. So if I say OK, and no, I broke it. Did I not save? Reminder, it's set. Was it a grouped registration? I bet it was. Let's unwait list Chuck here because I think this is going to be a better example. Um, no. Okay. Please work. There we go. Reminder. So what happened before with that other example is because it was a grouped receipt, it's going off of the first registration in that group and and firing based on it which receipt template. Because this isn't group, the Chuck's isn't grouped, it definitely saw that this course uses this template. Uh, the reminder template, so it pulled the reminder template out and then filled in uh, the course information for it. So handy for those of you that don't have grouped registrations um, or if everything in the group uses the same template, uh, which I think is going to be uh, across the board pretty, pretty common. So uh, hopefully that will help you guys out with uh, choosing the receipts as you need to. Okay, next. Okay, this next thing is kind of a big deal because this has been, oh, I can't do it from here. I got to go to look up standard courses and go to escrow. Edit it, Reggie's. Okay, Curtis Martin. I don't want to print receipt. I want to look at the payment. Forever, we haven't had the ability to refund out of escrow. Now we do. So if I hit the refund, it defaults. It, it You can't refund a, re, a refund that's already in escrow. You can't refund to escrow. So we know it's got to be the payer. Refund, you're out of here, you can only do the total payment. Uh, so it's, it's going to set this cash back out to the student. Cancel this register. Well, it's I mean, it's an escrow registration. It's not really a registration, so that doesn't matter. It's already got zero hours of CEU, so that doesn't matter. Choose a, a description, cancellation full refund, and he wants his cash. 
exclamation point process. And what it's doing is, like any other refund, is it created a refund payment. And negative 350, uh, it's still keeping where the original registration came from in the pay note. Uh, but the big thing is receipt number 44, or refund 44 to receipt 44, that matches up from, from the regular registration. So in your system, in your cash box, those two are going to be linked up and uh, uh, showing one is the refund to the other and all that good stuff. So that should take care of your accounting problems. You can now give that guy $350 in cash or check or however you do refunds. Um, anyway, or if it's to a Visa or MasterCard or whatever, then you got to go out to your payment processor and do your normal normal stuff for refunding the payment so okay next thing got that import wizard let me pull up let me look at Jason Allen and courses taken uh, so he's got a couple of crochet courses on here, but they're 20S courses. I've got a template. And why is that? Import registration. The only thing I've put on this on this um, template is course numbers and name IDs. You could have name information at the wazoo as long as you're matching on um you know email address or something else or well namely the NMID uh so email address or NMID you can match up with students already in the system um but big thing to notice is so Jason Allen's ID 117 we see that 117 so he's getting the 20F crochets courses here and we've also got uh, another student in here. So one one line per registration, even though they're going to the same person uh, in this template. Um, you can also fill in all sorts of other registration information, you know, fee stuff. Um, but otherwise, it's just going to pick the default. So let's run this. I'm not going to go through the speed registration because these are to did to two different courses. These are a listing of courses. The new thing is under import export registration import wizard. And if I go to the desktop, that import registrations XLSX, say okay. Yes, I only want the first tab. RG course, since I gave it the headings of actual field names it's automatically populating which where it's going to go yes i want that to go in the course code yes i want that to access that an id uh, is there a header yes there is so then we see what's in here obviously i could be going through a whole lot more in the list if, if we were pulling in a lot more name information or a lot more registration information but anyway this is all i need to get a basic done um, source code you'd probably want to do that interest code you'd probably want to do that but I'm not going to do it here for the sake of time import complete so now if I go look at Jason Allen and course is taken sure enough intermediate crochet to the 20f version and the beginning crochet the 20f version are both on his uh, uh, records so we got imported data here who did it add time yeah it it did the default uh, fee it didn't give that BOGO discount or anything like that but if you wanted you know you'd have to manually do that or or you can put in the import what registration fee to put in t-shirt size miscellaneous code whatever else you want off the registration screen um, you can do that so that should be handy for some of you. I know that do a lot of imports, especially from uh, 
organizations taking your courses. Okay, you ready for this really big one? This one was a lot of work, even though I, you know, you'd think it'd be something simple. Module locations, find location. Actually, first I need to show the preference because this is tied to a preference. Um, uh, course, uh, yeah, right here. Use location campus field. So if you've set that, now module locations, find location. I've I've already set a couple of campuses in here. Most of my courses don't have a campus, although Nebraska Center, that's UNL. But um, anyway, K-State, Durland Hall, Kenton Hall, uh, I've got in here. So the new field is right up here on top on the campus. If I say, OK, close, look up. Oh, I think my 010A, yeah, got it in the Acme Cleaners. So if the campus isn't set, you just go into this and select your building. Now, if you'll notice, Kenton Hall, Durlin Hall, they're not in this dropdown. You have to select your campus, yes, before you can select Durlin Hall, Kenton Hall from the building list. And the same thing from the room use, yes. All that, okay. And I thought I fixed that. No! Reset. Okay, and the room use screen, it will be fixed and working for that as well. Um, did I not... I might not be running the latest demo. Okay, but anyway. Uh, the other thing you can do with campus is... From statistics, course, course data summary, and go down here somewhere, location, and default report. Course number begins with 20. Well, we'll do that here in a second. The new thing is it pulls up a campus as a choice as long as you've got the campus preference set. So hit campus. Um, 20S, okay. No entry, that's a bulk of the report because I've only got K-State set for a few, few of my organizations. So, um, ah. by the way, if you're putting campus, if you are adding campus to locations that already exist it is going to f go down into the court into those courses and put that campus on those courses same thing with the location you put it in in the location on on uh you know module locations find location uh you put it in there it is going to go into room use as well so uh set it and forget it type thing, but I think that's going to help, uh, especially some of you guys that are m utilizing multiple campuses for your CE courses. Next thing, another biggie. Like I said, did a lot with email, so I'm going to go mailing labels. Uh, don't want the default report. Ah, let's do all names. Why not? Mass email launcher. Normal, normal, until you get here. Used to be there was a three-step thing you'd go through to get the email in. You know, you exclude names who have requested no email. You know, try, you know all this other hoopla. It's all in one screen, it, and it's a normal screen. It looks like most of your other stuff. You can still import the text document. Uh, if you're wanting to, let me see, what do I got? Uh, you guys aren't going to want to see that. Um, where is... I've changed some changed folders so many times, I don't know where things are right now. 
Okay. Ah, where's my test document? Oh, well, let's just load <laughs> error.txt. So, error messages, whatever. Uh, so, you can pull in a fresh a document um, text or HTML uh, documents is what it's looking for. I want to actually get rid of that. Um, you can double-click, and it'll expand out. Double click and it'll expand out so you could type big screen if you want. Um, but yeah, uh, also the wait, so however many seconds between however many messages so that you can go through and send these. Um, also, the big thing you're going to notice different is the send to. Normally, you just see one student name in there. Uh, I've put in mass email to clue you in. Hey, this is going into everybody you've selected in the cursor. I'm not going to send that because I've selected every single person in my demo, and that will take a few seconds. Um, actually, maybe a minute and a half. But anyway, um, so anyway, overhaul that screen. That's the big thing. Next one is... And I think I've already used this course, so... No, I haven't. Okay, good. Uh, I'm going to add a new main fee here, and I've already set this up. I have... Actually, I've got a couple huge fee names. Nice, long, huge, giant, wicked, big fee, named fee. Click on it. Yeah, it kind of truncates a little bit here. Um, yeah, we're missing fee at the end there when you click out of there. But for the most part, you can see it there. Uh, we're kind of running out of room, especially if you, depending on the options with your your membership and stuff. Um, I didn't want to make this column too big, um, but let's give this. Uh, we're going to charge just for making me choose this big long fee name. You're going to get charged extra 555 bucks. All right, save this. Add edit Reggie's. So the new thing is, instead of 30 characters, it's gone to 50 characters. So I'm going to add Wayne Amos. No, I'm not giving him the staff fee. He's getting the nice, long, wicked long name. Um, so, yeah, it truncates a little bit on the view. I did widen these a little bit, but you know, I'm just running out of space. I'm hoping, I don't know, might have to do some rearrangement to get some of this stuff in um, properly, but uh, we're, um, yeah, we're just hurting on space. But a uh, big thing is you can use that, and on AceWeb it'll, it'll show that full name because HTML, it can stretch wider, uh, no problem. Um, but yeah, and really you just need to see it in the dropdown when you select it. Uh, obviously, on reports, if you've got reports set, you might want to widen your report to show the, the bigger named fields if you do uh, start doing those. So, all right. Next thing, another email item is, okay, so when you update to this latest build, one of the new things you're going to get, if I can select the right thing, is this new men met to teach. And actually, we're changing the default name of that. But um, um, uh, important thing is, so this is a notification that the following course has been met, has met the minimum number of students required to hold the class. So this is addressed to your instructors. Thank you for enjoying with enjoying, or thank you for teaching with us. Enjoy. Um, yeah, big thing is with this is all course fields um, are available. Course UDF fields are available in the the body. Uh, so I've got just some course stuff. Um, nice date works just fine. Um, 
functions, though, you got to be careful with. They have to be functions that work in both Student Manager and Ace Web if you use Ace Web with this feature. Um, so that's going to be. I had to use the add loc to function because that uses that is in both Student Manager and Ace Web. Um, so I'm kind of giving away that this is the feature that works with Ace Web in addition to Student Manager. So let's go look at this. I got nobody enrolled in this course, so let's set the minimum to one. Save it. Add a registration. I've got somebody that's canceled, so let's add, um, oh, Amos. Where's Amos at? Amos. Right here, third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Helps if I choose a course that isn't canceled. Okay. Add. Wayne Amos. Save. That little pop-up that said mail sent, that's going away. But um, big important thing is my paper cut. Come back here, paper cut. Paper cut. Where did you go? Email instructor. So it pulls the subject from the, the title of the email template. So you can change that to be whatever you want. Um, uh, I already forgot. Lindsay and I have been working on this, so so she came up with something um, a little bit better. Course minimum. I can't remember what minimum enrollment has been met or something like that. Anyway, we've come up with a better subject than that. But anyway, that's what I've got set in my demo. So that's what's being sent. Uh, this is notification. The, following course has met the minimum and gives the information and there's a thank you for teaching us. So it pulls that information again uh, into this. So this is automatically sent out as soon as you hit that minimum from both Manager and AceWeb and it uses the exact same template in AceWeb as it does in Student Manager. So kind of a big deal took a minute to get that working, so enjoy using that. So those are the big 18 things that we found in January. I did say that there's one more item that's been added last minute, and I'm not going to show it, but I'm just going to mention it, and it's having to do with the course import wizard. Um, the instructor ID, or, you know, the instructor system ID uh, wasn't a field available in there, um, but some of you have found that, that when you exported data out of Student Manager, that field was available and a lot easier to use in, in your instances in, in as far as importing new courses in for the next semester. So that's been added for the Course Import Wizard. So that's... Uh, Everything I've got. Were there any questions through all of that? Uh, lots of questions. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that was asked is whether it be um, uh, will there be documentation on the new features? And you might oh, yeah. mention the forum. I think you were going to talk about that. Yes, the forum. It's not ready yet, but but where you where they'll go to see this. So right, uh, the forum is is going to be your go to. Um, uh, right away, that's going to be, I'm going to make that post, uh, well, same time I make the the student manager post, right after that is when I'll post on the forum. Um, and then um, help guide itself, uh, it's whenever the next time Cheryl uploads the help documentation, and that's probably going to be after the uh, ACE web the next ace web release which is uh, pretty soon it's going to uh, have a lot of the well it's going to have several of the features that jason and stein are going to talk about this afternoon so uh wanted to get all that stuff in together before we 
posted that one big push out to uh, to the help documentation. So okay, um, that's Sharon, coming. Who's, gotcha. Who's who's uh, sharing right now? Right now, sharing is off. I don't know. I or didn't click you, anything. Uh, um, I can show again. Yeah, go back in and share. You're you you've got the helm. O open up the forum so people and go to the go to Aceware website and then drive people to the forum. And while you're doing that, um, we'll let you. I don't think you're sharing yet. No, uh, Sharon, you're gonna have to make me presenter again. I think. Let me see if okay. I can. There. And there you are. All right. So go to your go to the Aceware website and uh, show folks where you can get to the uh, forum. And uh -oh. uh, well, you you've got several. Oh, you've got it. The new right. features is going to take you right there. Okay. Uh, and that gets you right into this forum. Otherwise, you could go that, through. No, that's great. That's great. I forgot about the new Ace features. So the the yep. little the little red new features button, uh, and there will be a post there. And if you look at the very top post, you can subscribe to the forum so that whenever Matthew posts, which is generally monthly, the update, uh, you'll get a notice that the student manager upgrade new features is is in there. So, all right. So that is one thing, and. Um, there was a lot of items to cover. One of the things we might want to do in the forum is probably group these items by function so that you kind of have all of the email together and the course data together, which uh, just with a large number of new features. Did have a specific wish list that I think uh, you might be interested in on the instructor uh, email. If you want to jump to manager and pull up that send uh, instructor the student list, um, Emma, just pull up, pull up course. We're going to get to the send instructor, send instructor email. Uh, how tough would it be to add the students' uh, special needs to that, so that if a student has special needs, the instructor would know about that? Uh, shouldn't be too hard because we've already got. You've got name data, so you just be grabbing needs. Uh, check, but I, what is but I think Emma's check special needs just gives you right. a listing of the students. The email. Right. Well, I'm, I'm just I'm saying I've I've got it exposed got it. to this good. area, so I should good. be able to pull it into this. Sounds good. Uh, that one I'm trying to think with other items. Uh, the fact that this is going this item this this webinar is being recorded. This will be uh, posted on a conference webinar site. Trying to think. Any other questions uh, from the participants? Go ahead. We do. Ahead. We have one from Whatcom, Matthew. Oh, go ahead. With the uh, minimum enrollment email that you've set up, can it also be set up to send an email when someone drops oh. below that oh. so that you know you're below the minimum? Oh. <laughs> Ew. Ew. Uh, we hadn't thought about that. Okay. Have to think about that. <laughs> always given us, always given us something to think about, and we appreciate that. Yeah, I think what it does is if you drop below, and then the next person comes in and registers, that that instructor's going to get a second email saying that they've met the minimum. But um, no, I, I we haven't had. That's something we can talk about. This is a new yeah. feature, so we haven't worked out all of the options yet. So. <laughs> Well, I have taken back control of that. Matthew, you had some shout-outs, too, um, on folks saying they really appreciate the multiple campus feature. So thanks for your feedback on that. Um, and as we mentioned, this will all be posted in the forum. This is going to give you a chance to go back through the forum and the new items, go back to the video so that you can uh, wrap your head around all of these changes and, and see it in action as you review, the, review those. Do want to remind you that Amy will be joining us this afternoon from Tri County Technical College, and she'll be talking about how they use student manager standard operating procedures and how that's helped them out. And I will t remind everybody we do have that template, and I'll bring that up again this afternoon of a template so you can develop your own.
And I want to give a shout out to Laura James at Lee College. She is the winner and will get some pralines from Savannah Sweet Shop. I'll be in touch with you, Laura, to get your home office mailing information so we can get that to you. But for now, we're going to let you go and have some lunch and join us back here at 1.30 Central Time to hear from Amy. Until then, enjoy yourself and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Oh, darn it. Uh, Oops. Uh, You going to close the webinar, Sharon? I did.